Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge after being wronged. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button and let's begin. The first story. Guys did not listen to me and played with the ball. As a result they received a fine of a thousand dollars. The second story. My cousin stole our grandfather's valuables. I made him lose money and he was arrested. The third story. Karen wanted a diamond ring but ended up with a sapphire ring and was overwhelmed. On to the first story. Keep playing handball and scare the SH out of me. Pay a thousand dollars in damages. So some backstory. I recently got a traineeship doing IT work in a school. The school is what you can call one of those schools where only the rich can afford. I'm talking $12,000 a year in total fees to go to this school. Compared to me who went to a public school and before that, home school. So already to me, this place is crazy fancy. Anyway, I pretty much have my own staff room as the on-site administrator. Let's call him AD part for him being an administrator, but also for him just being an awesome dude. Doesn't use the room for office work. His main desk is in another block so he's normally there. In my staff room there are a lot, and I mean a lot of very expensive equipment, from projectors to monitors, desktops, laptops, etc. The monitors are the main subject of this story. Anyway, during break times I have to be in the staff room so that students can come, and I can help troubleshoot their devices. Mind you, I may be a staff member, but I can't put students on detention or anything, and they know this. The only thing I really can do is confiscate items when they're being used irresponsibly, and even so I try not to do it. Since I first started about two months ago, there's been a group of about eight year tens. The reason I dislike them so much is because they played handball outside the staff room. Now, I'm fine with you playing handball. Sure, the noise is a little annoying, but I can ignore it. But when you or one of your friends pegs it at each other after losing a round, whenever this happened, they were standing in front of the staff room when being pegged at, and miss every time, only for me to hear a loud thud from the wall or window behind me and make me crap my pants. It starts to become annoying. Now, I'm a pretty lenient guy, so for the first three times I gave them their ball back straight away and asked them nicely not to throw the ball at the staff room. They didn't listen of course, and on the third time it came in I said I would take it till the end of the day. Within minutes the ball came flying in the staff room barely missing one of the students that was having their device connected to the Wi-Fi. I grabbed the ball and quickly hit it in the cabinet. Seconds later three of them come in. Hey, can we have our ball back? What did I say last time it came in? Yeah, but I thought I could just have it back. No, sorry, I've warned you three times already. You're gonna have to come get it back at the end of the day. But can I just have it back now? As I just said, you can come get it back later. This went on for another five minutes of them trying to persuade the ball from me. They ended up giving up and coming back at the start of the next day. I said next time it came in that I'd take it for even longer, and as promised I gave them their ball back, hoping that they'd learnt their lesson. I was wrong. Within seconds the ball was being pegged at the wall and the window, but they weren't playing handball anymore. They were actively throwing the ball at the wall and the window. A teacher who was on playground duty saw this and came and took the ball off them, which meant I could finally do some work. The next day they somehow managed to get another ball and was playing the same game again. Again the ball came in and I said they could have it back at the end of the week. It was a Wednesday. Of course they argued but I said no. Three of their friends came at different times claiming that the ball was theirs and the other guys took it from them. I still said no of course as I already knew whose ball it was as I saw him getting it out of his bag. Anyway, one of them thought it'd be funny if he'd pretend to steal the computer monitor near the front door and saying things like, well, guess I'll take this if you're taking the ball. A few of them started playing along with other things they could get their hands on. Since it was a joke, they didn't steal anything of value. Maybe some cable ties lying around, but nothing else. But it was the type of nonsense humor that just gets on your nerves when it happens enough. That's when I had the idea. A lot of the monitors in this room are very fragile. Liquid crystal displays normally are especially as some of these came out of a multimedia lab. So I decided to put a few in a row on the table near the door. These monitors would easily cost around 250 to 300 each. Anyway, a day or so later I can hear the banging against the window, and as I expected, smash! The ball flew in through the door and nearly smacked one of the monitors near center, but just a bit higher. I could practically see the damage. But it was so much better than I hoped. I stacked them sort of one in front of the other so when the first one got hit it was like dominoes. It actually tipped back and pushed the four others behind it. All but the one that was hit fell off the meter high table and pretty much smashed on impact with the ground. It was beautiful but also sad. They were some good monitors. I reported the incident to AD, who then escalated it to the principal and year coordinator. 
I didn't see who threw the ball, but outside the staff room were some CCTV cameras, and they caught everything. The kid who threw the ball was suspended for two weeks and given a $1,000 fine, or his parents, I should say. For the destruction of the monitors, the rest of them were given a three-day suspension, since I had asked a total previous of nine times. When they came back, they no longer played handball in front of the staff room no more. I was smiling for the rest of the week. The best thing? I didn't get in trouble because it never would have happened if they listened in the first place. The second story is... Steal from my dead granddad. Lose your benefit money. This is a family-style revenge, so get ready. My granddad had lived down the road from us since before I could remember. He would always play with me and my sister when my mom had to work, and I thought of him as my second father. He kept a really expensive platinum necklace on as a keepsake for my grandmother, as he always told me stories about her and the wars he served. Some backstory now on my aunt's family. They were basically people who refused to work, and were actually proud of scamming to the government to pay for their lifestyle. Through benefits, they would falsely claim on mental disability, and being obese is a justification to not work. At the time, getting as much as my mom would at her full-time job. My cousin had literally texted me at the time that he doesn't want to work and play on his Xbox. This B, you're a grown A 26-year-old man, act it. They never visited my granddad and for good reason. He was physically disgusted with a lot of them. So here's when the story starts. My granddad winds up in hospital due to a heart attack. My mom, my sister, and me show up to care for him. After three days, and when the doctor explains that he hasn't got much time left, and to say our goodbyes, EA, evil aunt, rocks up with her family. So much for being so ill you can't drive to get a job. They ask how much time he has left. Us wanting to be civil told them and led them in to talk to him. He then passes away after another day, and we get together to decide how he would want his funeral. Since my gran was buried in Cornwall, we decided to hold the ceremony there, so that they can be buried together. Cornwall was about 300 miles away, but we thought it would be worth it, and I still lay down flowers every year. EA and her family not only do not want to go down to Cornwall, they refuse to chip in even 50p down for anything. So they decide to stay up and watch his house. I know, red flags, but we were mourning so we didn't think it through. The funeral was beautiful, heartfelt eulogies that brought memory after beautiful memory. All was well, except they had dug the wrong plot, and they decided to tell us during. Maybe one of granddad's ways of making us laugh up there. Until we got home, empty. Anything of value was gone, and the only thing left behind was some paintings for my grandma. She was a really good artist, and me liking art as well decided to keep them. We were peeved. We went to EA's and denied everything. We had nothing on her at the time, so we decided to file a police report and left it at that. Until three weeks later when we came round to visit and see if everyone was coping. My mom had noticed some new expensive things. New TV, new PlayStation, the works. And she began to suspect something, as well as me and my sister, until EC, evil cousin, comes in. And he's wearing my granddad's platinum necklace. I asked him where he got it from, and he told me he had bought it with some of his money. We get in the car and all of us are seething. They are no longer family. We needed revenge. The revenge time. Now I mentioned before that they had been falsifying their medical records so that receive benefits from the government. Every time we would go over and sneakily take photos of everything they had just bought, as well as my EC's stash and my uncle's collection of stolen goods. Forgot to mention he would steal big items off of vans and then sell them online for an extra profit. We collected every text message of them bragging about their many fancy holidays and them refusing to want to work, compiled a case report, and anonymously sent it to the claimant investigators and let them do their jobs. A month later I hear from one of my other cousins, nice girl, training to become a nurse, and I really admire that she didn't take the path of her family, that EA and uncle got their benefits taken off them and had criminal charges and had to pay restitution to the businesses they stole off and my EC got arrested. They are now financially effed. I think the last time I talked to them was them asking for money. Since I came from a well-off family, they thought I could convince my mom. She doesn't want to speak to them. I told them to F off. A lot of you are wondering if I got the necklace back. Unfortunately, EC decided to pawn it for money to cover his losses. Didn't find that out until half a year later. By then it had been sold. I got some of the stuff that my granddad had, some vintage records, some army paraphernalia, a few bits of jewelry, but all the stuff that was personal was long gone. I never talked to them again. And the last story is, Sapphires aren't a Karen's best friend. Not my story, but my cousin's. Let's call him Dave. So Dave, 34 male, was dating a Karen for a really long time, like four years, and earlier this year he finally proposed. Now Karen was a bit of a gold digger and a very entitled person. She was a bit of a white trailer trash, but fancied herself a rich lady. 
She was very vocal to all the other women in the family about how she wanted a traditional diamond ring and how she'd like Dave to follow the tradition of getting her an engagement ring or a three month salary. Now, Dave isn't super rich, but he does have a stable factory job and around here that's basically upper class and his three month salary would be between $3,000 and $6,000 depending on overtime. Teeny tiny town with nothing around but factories, so our cost of living is hella cheap compared to other places. Needless to say, Dave did not want to spend that on a ring given the global situation and the fact that he could be laid off at any time. He'd been doing the ring shopping at the beginning of the year and thankfully wasn't laid off. So Dave decided to look into alternatives and found white sapphires. For those of you who don't know, white sapphires are a fantastic alternative to diamonds. They can be grown so they're not gotten with slave labor, aren't artificially inflated in price, and to someone who isn't a jeweler they look exactly like a diamond. So Dave was able to buy the size stone that Karen wanted with a fancy setting, gold band, the works for a fraction of the cost if it had been a diamond. He proposed and told her it was a diamond and he stayed for a year. A bit of a D move but it was probably him being petty. He jokingly told me it was probably his way of getting revenge for her being such a Karen. However, it doesn't end there. As you can imagine, once the wedding planning started, it didn't go well. Karen was an entitled witch and didn't understand why a global pandemic was cause enough to hinder her for having her perfect day. It all came to a head one day when she and Dave had a fight over the guest list. The dream venue she chose didn't allow for as many people as they needed. Like 300, they both had big families. And Karen sent out invitations and saved the dates without Dave's knowledge. Except she only invited her side of the family. No one on Dave's side got an invite, not even the in-laws. Dave called off the wedding and kicked her out of his apartment, in his name. Karen kept the ring out of spite, something Dave didn't really care about. It didn't hold any value to him, and he was more worried about the wedding he was now having to cancel, and the texts he was getting from Karen's side. It took a few months but they all calmed down, and he didn't hear from her until last month. Turns out she tried to pawn the ring to a pawn shop in town, known for its jewelry, because the owners were in the jewelry business before they switched to pawning. She was convinced that she'd get a few thousand for it since she still believed it was a diamond. The pawn shop offered her a couple hundred because it was a sapphire, and the owner actually liked it. She called Dave several times and sent a billion texts. He never answered or picked up, demanding that he pay her in cash what the ring was worth, threatening to sue for the lie he told her, etc. He and I had a good laugh listening to her tantrum. I guess diamonds might be a girl's best friend, but sapphires are definitely not for Karens. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.